Welcome to part seven in our series of playing uh, Breakout with Deep Reinforcement Learning. This is the final video. If you've made it this far, congratulations. You are training a model right now, probably, as you watch this. Um, today, we are just going to uh, get the live plot class working and then test everything out. So earlier, we, uh, we you know, sort of stubbed out this live plot class so we could use it in, uh, in our implementation before it was quite ready. So now we are going to go ahead and code out uh, live plot. And it is exactly what it sounds like. It is a, a plotting uh, method or a plotting class that is going to help us uh, see some of our data over time. Um, there are a few different approaches you could take to this. So I started out just, uh, you know, displaying a pie plot plot on the screen. And that, uh, that ended up being very low performance. It uh, d did not, in my experience, work very well as sort of a true interactive live plot, which is what this was supposed to be. So what I ended up doing was iterating towards just writing, you know, creating the plot and then writing it out to disk. So I could just come over and click on it whenever I wanted to see, you know, the current graph. So we're going to do a couple of imports. We're going to pull in matplotlib.pyplot. And then we're going to import OS. And it is traditional to import that as PLT. That's the standard. We also are going to need date time. All right, and let's start with an init method. So we're going to create a figure equals plt.subplots. We're going to set our labels. X label. And that's going to be buck times 10, self.ax.set y label, returns. And why am I doing epoch times 10? Um, well, because I'm sure there are, there are some ways you could smooth this out. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm basically taking an average every time I store one of these values. And then I am, you know, only plotting that average for one out of every 10 epochs. So I'm sort of artificially smoothing it out. So I'm adding a little note to ourselves that whatever we're looking at is one tenth of the actual, um, you know, number of epochs. So we're going to say self ax set title turns over box. Simple enough. Uh, we're going to say self.data equals none. We're going to be using that data object or that data um, variable a little bit later. And self.box equals zero. All right. Now we come down and get to the fun part, the update plot. So here, instead of just taking self, we're going to take self and stats. Uh, we're going to set self.data equals stats average returns is what we want. And then we also want self.eps data. Uh, looks like I missed that one up here. So self.eps data equals stats epsilon checkpoint. And you may find that different variables are more interesting to you. Um, I found for me that being able to see the current epsilon and average returns were the two things that were really, really useful in, uh, in getting all this working. So self.epox equals len of self.data. Self.ax.clear. So we're going to clear 
previous data. Probably not necessary, but self.ax.set xlim zero self epochs. We're basically setting um, the uh, the x limit to our the length of our data. Um, and then we're actually going to do our plotting. So self.ax.plot self.data uh, this second uh, block of input is basically how we're going to display it. Um, that should be, B should be either blue or black. Um, and it's basically saying we want a line. And then we're going to say label equals returns self plot again. And self.eps data. And we're going to do this as r dash, so a red line. If we did like ro, it would be red dots, but I want lines. Label equals epsilon. And self ax legend. And we want to say location equals upper left, which is just it's um, something it's going to understand to say. Hey, stick the legend for returns in epsilon in the upper left. Um, finally, we're going to say make sure the plots directory exists. We're going to say if not os.path that exists um, plots. Then os.actors plots. And finally, self.save self.fig dot save fig plots plot underscore um, and we're going to need oh we're going to need the current date so let's get that so current date equals date time dot now and we're going to be using uh, String format time, so strf time y. And uh, anything to do with date time, I always have to look up to get the exact format. Um, but that is what we need for this use case. So we're going to say plot current date dot png. All right. So what this should do is let us create a live plot object and plot uh, our data over time. So let's come back over to our agent. Um, I think we earlier we created plotter uh, equals live plot. Let's see if we collected our stats. And then over here we did call plotter.update plot stats. So I actually think we're already all um, wired up to use our plotter class. Uh, let's go ahead and kick it off. And training really isn't very fast, so this may take a moment. Okay, we did episode 10. Let's see how often we told it to plot. Hopefully we said every 10. Um, nope, we said every 100. So that is going to take just a moment to get through um, 100 episodes.
Okay, still thinking. We're through 30. Let me, this isn't the only thing I'm running on this machine. Let me close the other one and see if, uh, if that speeds us up just a little bit. In fact, this is running so slowly, I'm actually tempted to see um, what our device is. And just make sure that we are... I'll do it with this test file over here. Um, let's go ahead and print device. Well, it is running uh, CUDA. So that does tell me that it's using the GPU. It may just be taking a moment and that is okay. Let's go back to our main and wait another minute for our plotter to come back and do its thing. This is a great time to twiddle your thumbs, grab a cup of coffee. Okay, we've hit 70. You'll also notice that we, we did finally get an episode return of zero. Now, obviously, Epsilon is still very, very high. Um, so we're not going to get, you know, great returns over here. Um, the fact that Epsilon is 0.97 means that, you know, 97% of the time we are still, um, we're still going to, you know, pick a random action versus something that, uh, that is actually meaningful. So we're 10 epochs away from seeing our, uh, seeing our plot and finding out if, uh, if the code I just wrote is functional. And we hit 100. So let's come over here. I'm going to reload from disk, and now we have a plots directory. And we can see the plot. And right now that's just sort of showing it bobbing along um, on the bottom. So Obviously, uh, I think I mentioned in the last video, this is going to take, you know, 30 plus hours to train. I'm not going to retrain it uh, for the video. What I will do is copy my pre-trained model over um, so we can go, you know, just kind of see what this looks like when it's, uh, when it's trained up. I'm going to get rid of the untrained latest. I'm going to copy in... Uh, the one that I got working. Uh, nope, I don't want to. I don't want to move. I want to copy and paste. Latest.pt. Doesn't matter that that's not readable. And we are going to run test.py with that updated model. No, and it does not seem to be doing very well. So let's see, what did we mess up in test.py? This is why I wanted to test this. So we set epsilon very, very high um, in test.py when really epsilon needs to be very low. So I think, I think that's what's going on. So let's try setting our epsilon to zero which is really what we want it to be um, for testing purposes. Or we'll do uh, 0 0.005. We'll do just a tiny little bit of jitter. There we go. That's the model that uh, I was expecting to see. So the, uh, the important thing to note there is you know, your epsilon value is basically picking how often you take a random action. So we were taking pretty consistent random actions um, because epsilon was set to one, so it was just kind of randomly bouncing around and it was not using the model that I trained. And as you can see, the, the model that I trained isn't perfect. 
Um, I'm sure that you could get much better results. I've seen it get, you know, probably average out to about a score of 25, which wasn't bad for my goals. Um, but it's definitely not uh, superhuman or anything like that. It's a pretty, you know, it's a, it is a functional breakout player. Um, and uh, let me see, too, while we're sort of in, uh, in overtime here. If I can find one of the one of the plots that that I would expect you to you know take a look at, I'm going to pull up another uh, pie charm here. So these were some of the plots um, that I ended up you know doing as I was training this thing, and you can see in this case you know 600 is really 6,000 again times 10. Um, and this was, you know, just another sort of demo run. It really took a little over a million um, to get this thing, you know, sort of properly trained up. You'll also notice something interesting here. Um, this isn't, you know, this wasn't something I, I coded in one run. This is something that, you know, I took and iterated on and iterated on and over the course of a couple of weeks got working. It took many, many different training runs um, you'll notice that I'm, I'm plotting based on date. Um, so, you know, originally this was probably a dozen different plots going back. Um, you know, I was saving the model off every thousand epochs so that I could go back and see if I found one that was, you know, a little bit better and uh, see what it was doing. So I would take what we've, what we've coded through so far as you know, one, just a walkthrough, just a good, you know, seeing how it all works and getting some experience typing it out. Hopefully you did type it out. But I would also take it as a, a starting point. You know, this took many, many iterations to get working. Um, you know, you're, you may need to tweak it a little bit. You'll probably have to play with the learning rate as it trains. Um, and then I'd also encourage you, if you if you get my code working, which you should definitely try to do, um, I would encourage you to go and take this and try to apply it to, you know, another Atari game. Um, I started out with this, you know, playing the uh, the cart pole game. Took a took a course, a series of video walkthroughs, much like this one, that uh, showed how to play, you know, cart pole. Um, and uh, the Frozen Lake game, and then you know slowly adopted those to play Pong, and then to play Breakout, um, and and build some other cool projects. So uh, my advice would be you know code along, watch all the videos, write all the code, get it working, um, be ready to play with it for a few days, be ready to experiment. Uh, this will take you know a lot of time to get right. And, uh, you know, just keep having fun. This is, uh, you know, I'm doing this because I enjoy it. I hope everyone else is, you know, sort of doing the same. And with that, this was the final video in our series. I hope you uh, continue to enjoy code and uh, deep learning.